In this video, we are looking at the 1823 Foreign Policy Statement, the Monroe Doctrine. Before we talk about the doctrine itself, let's tackle some context and geography. The United States had been engaged in a second and indecisive war with Great Britain called the War of 1812. The United States is in the beginning stages of the market revolution and slowly industrializing. It is continually pushing the frontier and Native Americans west and opening up lands for development by settlers. A lot is going on at this time on the world stage that will influence the creation of the Monroe Doctrine. First, Britain and France, and to a lesser extent, other European powers, are on the move again in a new wave of colonization. They are quickly taking control of large swaths of Africa and Asia. However, two European powers are on the decline, Portugal and Spain. Revolutions will rock their colonial holdings all over Latin America, and once those two colonial powers are expelled from most of Latin America, the United States does not want to see another European power take their place. Before moving on, let's discuss a little bit of the geography. It is important to understand the geography of the Western Hemisphere so we can understand what part of the world the Monroe Doctrine is pertaining to. First, when I say Latin America, I mean the geographical area of Mexico, Central America, South America, and the Caribbean. When I say America or American policy, I'm referring to the United States of America. Here are some maps. There are two key points to understand about the Monroe Doctrine. Number one is the American policy that the New World is no longer subject to the colonization of European countries. And the second key point is the United States will remain neutral in conflicts on the European continent. This harkens back to Washington's farewell address. Moving on to the author's intentions. The intended audience are potential European colonizers, specifically France and Great Britain. The purpose is to establish an area of American influence and hopefully make European countries think twice about colonizing and interfering in the affairs in the Western Hemisphere. This is all from the point of view of America not wanting Britain or France to replace Spain and Portugal as large-scale colonial powers in the Americas. Let's move on to who agrees and disagrees with the Monroe Doctrine. At the time, European powers by and large disregarded the doctrine as the United States did not have a credible navy to enforce it. However, the British agree with it in principle of free markets and trade with the Americas. Hawkish and interventionist politicians wishing to extend United States foreign policy and influence would agree with the doctrine. Now let's move on to the legacy. The legacy of the Monroe Doctrine is very important. It will go on to justify many interventions in Latin America by the United States since its publication. Most commonly, AP students will see it linked to the Roosevelt Corollary, which is even more interventionist in Latin American countries. There will definitely be a future video on the Roosevelt Corollary and American interventions. Well, that does it for this document. If you liked the video, click that button, subscribe, and share with your friends.